Using the right campaigns with the right structure is a core foundation for success in Google Ads in 2024. Because let's face it, if you're using the wrong campaigns or they've been set up the wrong way, you're never gonna see the full amount of success that you could be seeing with Google Ads for your business in 2024. So that is why in this lesson of Get Google Ready, I'm gonna be taking you through how to structure and organize your Google Ads account the right way. One of the biggest issues I see with Google Ads campaigns when I'm going through and doing reviews of accounts is that I can see that just people tend to have a bit of a slapstick approach to their Google Ads accounts. And what I mean by that is that they, you know, they hear that it's a good idea to do search, so they run a search campaign, and then they hear that it's someone else says to do performance max, so they do performance max. For success at Google Ads, the key is to take a step back and actually take the time to plan out why you're doing certain things in your Google Ads account. And that's why I wanna give you access to what's called my How to Win at Google Ads Planner. And you can get that just by following the link in the description below. And once you've answered all of those questions, you are then able to design your own Google Ads account structure, which is gonna be best for your business. So once again, if you wanna get access to that How to Win at Google Ads Planner, just follow that link in the description below. Now, because this is such an important topic, what we are gonna do is we're gonna move into an extended screen share because I've prepared some teaching slides for you so that I can take you through this content in the most clearest way possible. So right now, let's get straight into the teaching. The first question you need to ask when it comes to planning your Google Ads account structure is you need to go through what and who you will target. And you need to remember that in Google Ads, there are four main options for targeting. It's not just about keywords. Obviously, keywords are the search terms that you are target. So these are the search terms which you're gonna to add to your campaign, which are gonna trigger your ads. But it goes beyond that. It's also the different audience so these are the groups of people with specific interest, intents and demographics that Google groups together. Then there's also your demographics, so that's your age, your gender, income range, and also other things like parental status. And then there's the location, the physical location that people live. So when I think about Google Ads and the targeting that we go through, it's not just about the keywords that they're searching, it's also what groups of people in different locations are searching the terms which are giving me the best results. And that's the way that you need to think about it. It's not just keywords, it's keywords words, audiences, demographics, and locations all together. So once you've got that built out and you know that there's four main drivers of optimizations that we're looking at with those keywords, the audiences, the demographics, and the locations, you can also target by devices. So whether it be a mobile or a tablet or a laptop. The next thing is, is the different types of Google Ads campaigns. The reason for why this is important is because if you have an understanding of the different types of campaigns and what the purpose of each campaign is, you can then better work out which campaigns are going to be right for your business. And time and time again, I see accounts where campaigns are either used the wrong way, so they're not used in the intention that Google has designed it, and they're just not suitable for their business. So this is a core understanding that you need to have. So what I'm going to be breaking it down to is the type of ads, the network, so that's where the ads appear, who it's suitable for, and also what it can focus on. So with their search campaign, obviously these are text ads. They appear on obviously the Google search network. I find these suitable for service-based e-commerce, and software as a service companies. And you can also have a separation between new clients, existing clients, and remarketing audiences. Then when it comes to Performance Max, the thing that you need to remember with Performance Max is that you are getting not only text ads, but shopping ads, image ads, and Google Map ads, and also video ads. And that's then also search, display, Gmail, and YouTube. For shopping, shopping is, once again, it's only on the shopping network, and it's only for e-commerce brands. When it comes to display, it's important to know that with display is for your image, ads and that only appears on the display network. Now Discovery, which has now been updated to the demand gen, so Discovery campaigns no longer exist and they are image ads and video ads and they're very much focusing on the YouTube shorts. And then there's also your video ads, which is on YouTube only. So the thing when you look down here, the only thing that I would say about this bottom section is just know that with your demand gen or your Discovery campaigns, which we now know are demand gen, they are very much for new clients only. You don't have the options to really set it for remarketing or for existing clients. Think of that as the top of the funnel. I haven't spent too much time on it, but then there's obviously your app campaigns, which makes sense that you 
you need an app to run that campaign. So what I wanna do now is just quickly run you through the pros and cons for the different types of Google Ads campaigns. And we're gonna break this down into keyword or audience targeting and the control of ad copy and what conversion endpoints work the best. So with search, this is where you have the highest amount of control over your keyword and audience targeting. So you can have you know exact match keywords or broad match. Now they are not as exact as they were previously, but still search campaigns is where you have the highest level of control. And for your audiences, you can even still set up targeted audience campaigns. Now, the reason for why with the control of ad copy, I've put the little asterisk there, is that throughout 2023 and also as we move into 2024, Google is gonna be rolling out more and more automatically created assets. At the moment, we still do have opt-outs, but it's just something to keep in mind. And for conversion endpoints, I find search campaigns great. You can pretty much tailor it for all of the different types of endpoints you'd want. And the main reason for that is because you can also tailor your ad copy and really start letting people know in the ad copy what conversion action you want them to complete. Now with Performance Max, it's low control on keyword and audience targeting. You do add in keywords and you do add in audiences, but for Performance Max, you have to be very, very mindful that these are only suggestions. And then you also have a low control over the ad copy. But you know you do have a lot of different conversion endpoints. It is important to remember that Performance Max is built for conversions. So on a new account, I would not be starting with Performance Max. I'd be starting with either search or shopping and then adding in Performance Max once you have a collection of conversions. Still, I'm giving the recommendation of 30 conversions versions in 30 days. Shopping is pretty much similar to search in that you have a high control over the keyword and audience targeting. Now, search is different in that you don't select the keywords, but you can build out your negative keyword lists. So shopping campaigns, the keyword targeting comes from your product titles and your descriptions. And that's why it's really, really important to have a good keyword focus in your product title. And then you can build out a negative keyword list to limit where your ads are showing. And when I say you've got a control of the ad copy, it is high control, but remembering that's coming from from your shopping feed, not from within Google Ads. And obviously shopping, it's all about sales. Display, once again, you have a high control over the keyword and audience targeting. The reason for why I'm saying high control is because you can still select the individual audiences that you want your ads to appear. You have a moderate control over your ad copy. And the reason for that is because more and more Google is rolling out responsive ads. And similar to your search campaigns, I'm saying that you can use display for all of the different endpoints, once again, because you can add in the ad copy what you're wanting the user to do. Discovery, once again, we're talking about demand gen there, low control on everything. You have low control over the keyword targeting and low control over the ad copy. And video, now for your keyword and audience targeting, you do have moderate control. This is actually getting less and less, but the one thing you do have a high control over is the ad copy. And the reason being is because you're creating the video ads. So once we've built on how you can target your Google Ads campaigns and also the different types of Google Ads campaigns you can use, another paradigm that I use when it comes to setting up my Google Ads accounts and how I structure them is I think of campaigns in four different types. They are either business building, they're either defensive, aggressive, or promotional. I'll explain that. So business building, these are what I call your always on campaigns. They'll be running every week of the year and they are promoting your core services and products. So whether you're running a sale or whether you're not running a sale, they are your always on campaigns that you, you know, you'll be gonna be running for as long as your business is open. Then there's your defensive campaigns and these are campaigns that are set up to stop or limit the benefits that competitors can get from bidding on your brand or your core service service keywords. So unfortunately, after you've established a brand for yourself, you will get some other people that will come in and try and move in on your brand. And that's where you find a lot of the time a branded campaign is a necessary evil. Some people don't like spending on their brand, but in many cases, you just have to do it. And then there's an aggressive campaign where it's flipped, where you're intentionally targeting your competitors and you're bidding on their name or their core products because you want to take over their tier one service market share. And then there's the promotional seasonal campaigns that only run for a period of time. So think Mother's Day sales, Father's Day sales, Black Friday, new product launches, or seasonality. So if you're selling swimwear, obviously leading into summer, you will be increasing your spend to sell more of those products. So they're the four different types of campaigns that you can run. And now it comes to the all important Google Ads structure. So obviously we've got our Google Ads account. Now I break this into two core ways. We've got our always on campaigns and our sales or promotional campaigns. And in our always on campaigns, I'm generally using search, obviously for our brand and our competitors 
the campaigns. So that's our aggressive and defensive campaigns. I also do go through and use and search for our non-brand core product or keyword themes. So these are the keyword themes or the product categories that you want to dominate that they don't have your brand name in it. And if you wanted to, you can also have in some dynamic campaigns. Now for e-commerce brands, you obviously then have those factors can either be in either search or shopping. And then what I'm still doing at the moment is that if we're getting any really high performing search themes or product category sales, I then move them over into their own performance max campaign, which is built around product categories or asset groups that are different keyword themes. So it's really, really important to note that with your performance max is that you need to have your asset groups based on subcategory products or keyword themes. The reason for that is remember that with performance max, you can't add say three audiences and go, they're the only audiences that I want you to target. And that's where people are falling down with performance max. They're trying to bring an old school paradigm to a new type of paradigm for Google ads, which is that rather than you giving Google targeting options, you're giving Google recommendations. But for success with performance max, you need to also make sure you've got a high level of conversions already. And if you want to, you can have um, some display and video campaigns that you use for general branding with a focus on app downloads or email subscribers. Then when it comes over to here, with my sales and promotional campaigns, this is very much where I use display in YouTube. And the reason for why I use that is because if we're coming into a sales or promotional period, what we don't wanna do is just ramp up the budget on our always on campaigns and then lose all momentum when we come out of it. Because when you come into a sales and promotional period, what you need to always be thinking of is how are you gonna exit that sales and promotional period? I've seen time and time again where people spend 12 months building up really highly successful always on campaigns and then they ruin it because they triple the budget or do something silly like that in a week for a promotion and then they can't get the performance back. That's why you break it out into different display or YouTube campaigns or even dynamic campaigns that are targeting sale pages. So that's the process that I go through. And now remember, if you follow that link in the description below, you can use that format which I gave you to create your own campaign structure for Google Ads. Thank you for sticking around. I know I know that that was probably an extended screen share more than what I would usually do on YouTube. But because this is such an important topic, I really, really wanted to be able to break down how you can correctly set up the best structure for your Google Ads accounts. And what I do also want to let you know that if you do go through and download that link for the How to Win at Google Ads Planner, you are also going to get some extra information about my paid community, which is my 10x Google Ads community. And I may be biased, but this is the absolute best community that you can get support for in Google Ads in 2024. And it would be absolutely amazing to see you in that community. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the next video of Get Google Ready for 2024. And in that video, we're gonna be talking about bidding strategies and you can watch that video by following this playlist right here. See ya.